Hey there, my name is Alexis and I'm going to show you how I made these floating brackets slash floating shelf pieces that essentially hold your toothbrushes up in the air. I had some spare red oak laying around from a previous project, but you can essentially make this with whatever kind of wood you have. It could even be plywood if you want. To cut the pieces in its triangular shape, I used a miter saw, but I'm going to show you how you can do this with a hand saw and a miter box. And to make the grooves to actually hold the toothbrushes, I used a Dremel tool, but I'm also going to show you how you can do this with a regular drill. So the reason I made this was I didn't like having so many items cluttering up the top of my sink. There's not that much space behind the faucet to have so many things and all the items I found that hold brushes take up a decent amount of space. So I first tried to address this by just getting a caddy that is basically a cup that mounts to the wall using adhesive or some kind of Velcro and I drilled a hole at the bottom so water can drain out but as you can see the, the floor is stained a bit because of it. Also it gets a little dirty at the bottom of that cup and it's annoying to clean so I figured maybe if I make a shelf that essentially holds the toothbrushes in place um, in a horizontal position, it's less likely to make that much of a mess and it'll be easier to clean if it does make a mess and it doesn't add more clutter to the sink space. I initially tried making this using a drill and a drill bit, using a small bit and then progressing up to a larger bit to make a large enough size indentation on the bracket, if that makes sense, as well as making sure the holes are as straight as it can be because I did initially did this using the largest bit first and the holes did not line up, but uh, I still messed up anyway because I cut the brackets not centered. So the indentation was a lot deeper on one end and not on the other. But at that point, it didn't really matter because just the, the amount of chip out from the drill bit as well as the indentations wasn't wasn't clean enough and I, I didn't like it at all so I started all over first making the brackets themselves and then worrying about how to make the indentations after because whatever drill bits I had just wasn't working so I used my miter saw to make the angled cuts so after making the first cut for the first bracket I had to redraw the angle instead of using my previous draw line because the saw blade is an eighth inch thick and if you cut the initial line that I made earlier one of the brackets would be smaller than the other and you don't want to do that unless you want to have a slightly smaller bracket which is fine as well. So if you don't have a miter saw that's not a problem. If you have a hand saw all you need to do is just pick up a miter box. The, this one I picked up from Home Depot it was like five bucks. I put the tools that I use in the description if you're interested and if you don't happen to have a hand saw and you were looking to invest in one uh, I picked up a $10 handsaw from Home Depot as well. It's made by Husky and for the last two projects I've used it on, it's worked pretty well. It cuts the wood pretty cleanly. So before cutting into your workpiece, you want to screw into your miter box, which comes with screw holes so that the miter box isn't moving while you're cutting your workpiece. And you want to clamp your piece down just so that it's not moving and you might end up making an uneven cut. And you know, it takes about maybe a minute to cut into it. I guess it depends on the wood that you're using. Then you just repeat the same step for the next piece. It definitely helps if you draw a line to give you an idea where you should be cutting just so that you keep your pieces as even as possible. Then once you've cut your pieces, I used 220 grit sandpaper to clean up the edges, make sure they're not too sharp, and then you work on making the grooves. So my next attempt into making the indentations for the brackets to hold the toothbrushes was using a Dremel tool. It was my first time using it and it was pretty simple to use. My only concern was how can I keep the drum sander attachment piece of the Dremel tools straight when I make these indentations. So what I did was I put painter's tape onto a scrap piece of wood and tape on the actual bracket and I'm going to temporarily adhere the bracket to that scrap wood so that I can clamp that piece of wood to my work table so I can work on the bracket without having to physically hold on to the bracket piece itself as well as hold on to the Dremel tool. So I started with marking out where I want the actual indentations to make sure they're not too big or too close to the edge. And I used a scrap piece of wood to be my fence to help keep my Dremel tool straight when making the indentations. 
and it surprisingly worked well. The Dremel tool did make a bit of smoke. I guess it was burning the wood from the fast speed, but that didn't really matter much to me since I'm gonna be staining this espresso, so it's not gonna be that noticeable. Just it was annoying making the indentations when the smoke's hitting you in the face. Luckily, I had my vacuum at hand to get the smoke out of my face while I finish off the indentations. But once you do a few passes, you don't really need the fence after that. So more or less, you can freehand the rest of the passes without having to worry about going too far out. And you're pretty much done after a few passes, just making sure everything's symmetrical or close to symmetrical. So you're more likely to have a power drill than you are a Dremel tool. So I'm gonna show you how you can make the same grooves using a power drill, a drill bit, some sandpaper, and some clamps. So you're gonna need the largest drill bit that you have, maybe around a half inch or three quarter inch. I used a half inch diameter drill bit. And wrap your drill bit in painter's tape, and then use painter's tape to attach the sandpaper around your drill bit. And then I use painter's tape again to make it double-sided so I can have that sandpaper stay in place without unraveling. I then use a scrap piece of wood to act as a fence, and then I just press the drill bit against the bracket pieces. And I used 60 grit sandpaper here. The, the lower the grit, the easier it is to remove material. I think the sander attachment that I had on my Dremel tool was much higher grit, and I think that's why it was burning. So if you were to do this, I would use the lowest grit possible, 40 grit if possible. That would be easier to remove the wood material and make the grooves faster. So since I probably didn't use the right grit when using the Dremel tool attachment, I can't say for sure which method is better. but you're more likely to have a power drill than you are a Dremel tool. So I would just go with the power drill, but I feel like I got better results with the power drill, to be honest. So after sanding everything down with 220 grit sandpaper, I stained it espresso colored, and then I put three or four coats of water-based polyurethane on it. So to actually adhere the brackets to the wall, I'm using these adhesive Velcro strips. Uh, they're normally used to hold picture frames, and I think two pairs are rated to hold up to eight pounds, I believe. And they have these little tags that make it easy to remove off the wall and off the piece if you decide to not want to use it anymore. So I'm going to cut the Velcro strips such that the tags are hidden so that, you know, you're not seeing a little white flap underneath when you're looking at the brackets. Though so I guess if you don't mind it, you can just have it show, but I think even if you cut the little bit of material off, it's still more than strong enough to hold up a pair of toothbrushes. So I put the other side of the Velcro strip to the bracket so that once I attach it to the wall, I just have to remove the adhesive backing. So before installing your brackets, make sure your wall surface is clean and dry so that it has the best adhesion. And that's about it. Just remove the adhesive backing off the Velcro strip and then attach it to the wall and just hold on to it for like a minute so that you have a good adhesion. And if you feel like you're slightly off, you could just pop it off. Just, I would wait until after it's properly adhered to the walls so that you don't accidentally remove it off the wall. So thanks for watching. Hope you liked the video. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, let me know down below. If you like it, give it a like. So yeah, thanks again for watching and take care.